Hello learners and welcome to another session about tribes of Sikkim. This is part of BSW044 and I, Professor Rosneem Biakim, is your course coordinator. Now before I begin the class, I would like to have a short recap about what we learned in the previous class. In the first session, we talked about Sikkim as a state, its demography and the population. We also touched upon the major state language and the major religion found in Sikkim. Detailed description about the Lepcha tribe and Bhutia tribe were also given which included their religious beliefs and customs, marriage and death rituals. Now before I begin, I would like to have also a short recap of the interesting facts about Sikkim which we did in the previous class. Now the capital of Sikkim is Gangtok. It was formed on 16th of May 1975. Sikkim was an independent kingdom till it became India's 22nd state on 16th of May 1975 when it was formed. Sikkim is divided into four districts, North Sikkim, South Sikkim, East Sikkim and West Sikkim. Now the capital of North Sikkim is known as Mangan. Capital of West Sikkim is known as Gazing. Capital of South Sikkim is known as Namchi and capital of East Sikkim is known as Gangtok. Now one should also remember that Sikkim state is a second smallest state by area and least popular state. Tista river is called the lifeline of Sikkim. Kanten Zonga National Park is one of the highest national park in the world. Guru Dongmer Lake is one of the highest lakes in the world. It is considered a holy place for Buddhists, Hindus and Sikhs. Also in Sikkim, the world's third highest peak, Kanchanjunga, is located. Sikkim accounts for the largest share of cardamom production in India along with spices. Losang is a New Year festival of Sikkim and Sonam Losang is the farmer's New Year festival. Major dance form of Sikkim is Kali Topi. Tankas or religious gold paintings depicting scenes from Buddha's life are a major art and crafts form as well as the sand mandala. The red panda is a state animal and they also have a festival known as the red panda festival. The state bird of Sikkim is called the blood peasant. The state flower is rhododendron. Now we learned about the Lepcha tribe and the Bhutia tribe in the previous session. Now we will learn about the Magar tribe. The Magar is one of the Nepali tribe found in Sikkim. They live mainly in South Sikkim and are also scattered in the eastern district. The Magar villages are situated in the sparse forest slopes at an average altitude of 4,000 feet to 6,000 feet. The community is divided into a number of exogamous and patrilineal thars, namely Pulami, Ala, Kepchake, Goranga, Darlami, Pun, Lungalim, Lamichani, Khapangi, Sibakota, Purbachen, Rana, Magrate, Lumre, Gole, Maske, Balangpak, Molale, and Sitong. Now all of them have equal status in the society. They speak in their own Magari dialect at home but communicate in Nepali with other groups. They use Devnagari script. Magar males wear the general Nepali dress, namely a knee-length shirt known as Daura and narrow trousers Surwal for the lower parts of the body. The women wear the gunui as the lower garment and the choli or blouse as the upper garment. Now let us understand their religious beliefs and social customs. The main function of the thar is to regulate marriage alliances. Each of these thars might have one or more gotras. Marriage alliances are made on the basis of this patrilineal ancestral gotras. Atrai, Tali, Ram, Atrisha, are some of the gotras found among the Magar. Gotras have a specific role at the time of performing of rituals, especially those performed after death. The members of the Magar tribe are followers of Hinduism and faithfully perform all its tough customs and rituals. The people are polite and hospitable. Usually there is no prenatal ceremony. Alcohol is prohibited for the pregnant mother because it is believed that it could damage the child's brain. 
after childbirth, the pollution period that is sutakri continues for 22 days. During this period, mother and child are kept separate. If her health permits, the mother cooks her own food. There is no taboo on friends and relatives taking food in the house. The name giving ceremony that is Nauran takes place after five or seven days in the case of a male child and after three or five days in the case of a female child. As regards the funerary rites, a corpse may be cremated or buried depending upon the situation. If there is a river near the place where the person dies, the body is cremated. In the past, the dead were usually buried, but now, under the influence of Hinduism, there is a growing preference for cremation. Unmarried persons and infants are generally buried. The corpse is carried in a box to the cremation ground. A Brahmin usually accompanies the party and helps the son or the sons to perform the funeral rites. The body is placed on the pyre and the eldest son sets it on fire. They normally immerse the bones in the water. Ancestor worship is part of the last rite, after which the son or the sons take bath before shaving their heads, eyebrows and faces. The pollution that is the kuri or mourning period continues for 13 days after which the Brahmin performs the Kriya ceremony. The nuclear family is the most prevalent type, but vertically extended families are also found. All the members of a family are bound together by the bonds of love and affection. Rules of avoidance are observed between a younger brother's wife and the husband's elder brother and also between daughter-in-law and father-in-law. A free relationship exists between an elder brother's wife and the husband's younger brother and also between grandparents and grandchildren. The father's property is equally divided among the sons. Daughters, if unmarried, also get a share from their father's property. The elder son succeeds the father. All families are expected to help one another in times of need and distress. Now, moving towards the other tribe, that is the Tamang tribe in Sikkim. Like Magar, Tamang is also a Nepali tribe. The word Tamang is derived from Tibetan words Ta and Mang, meaning horse warrior. In Sikkim, Tamang occupies an important position among the tribes of Sikkim. The entire community of Tamang is vertically divided into several subgroups known as Thars. All of these clans are exogamous, but each clan's members can intermarry with any other clan except in the case of the two clans, Gole and Dong, who consider themselves to be brother clans. All the members of one clan are said to be descended from the same ancestor. In the case of brother clans, the common ancestors were brothers. Theoretically, all the clans are equal in social and ritual status. But the offsprings of marriages between Tamang and non-Tamang women are considered lower and are not allowed to share the common cup with other Tamang despite the fact that they take the clan name of the Tamang father. In some places, the term Barojat and Atrajat are used to describe people of higher and lower status respectively. The term means literally 12 clans and 18 clans. Intermarriage between these two divisions usually does not take place. This is the only horizontal division in the otherwise completely vertically divided exogamous and patrilineal clans of the Tamang. A Tamang man can marry any girl from any clan except his own and his brother clan. Preferred marriage is between cross cousins, that is, to one's mother's brother's daughter or father's sister's daughter. Parallel cousin marriage of a man to his father's daughter or mother's sister's daughter is not tolerated. Sons and daughters of one's father's brother belong to the same clan as oneself. A widow can marry her late husband's younger brother but not the elder brother. Polyandry is absolutely forbidden but there are a few cases of polygyny found among some rich men. 
there is no stigma attached to a young man marrying an elderly widow or a divorcee. Likewise, an unmarried girl becoming pregnant is not looked down upon by the Tamang society. The love affairs of unmarried girls or boys do not prejudice their future marriages. If the lover of an unmarried pregnant girl refuses to marry her, he can take the baby after it is weaned and pay some compensation to the girl. Then the mother is free to marry anyone she likes. But marriages or sexual relationships between members of the same clan are never tolerated. Offenders are expelled immediately and they have to go to an entirely new area and settle there. In cases of wife abduction, the new husband must pay 60 rupees as compensation to the former husband of the woman he has taken. Adultery is punishable by a fine of 40 rupees which is given to the aggrieved husband as compensation. The husband can keep his wife if he so desires after receiving the payment from an adulterer. The Tamang follow Lamai's Buddhism. The Nepali community is composed of different subcultural stocks with considerable differences in physical characteristics and customs. Each group is subdivided into many classes. Government has declared some of these groups as tribes. The most important of these tribes are Limbu, Gurung, Magar, Rai, Tamang, Mewar, etc. Of the caste Hindus, they are the Brahmin, Thakur, Chetri, Gurkha, Sherpa, etc. The scheduled caste among the Nepali community include Kami, Damai, Sarki, and Maji. The Nepalese are spread throughout the east, south, and west of Sikkim. Except for the Sherpa and Tamang who are Buddhists, other Nepalese groups like Limbu, Chetri, Gurung, Gurkha, Magar, Damai, Kami, Rai, etc. follow Orthodox Hinduism. We have already described briefly the characteristics features of both Magar and Tamang tribes in this section. Now we shall take up the characteristics features of some other Nepali tribes. Now let us look at the Limbu. The Limbu are affectionately known as the Yaktumba which literally means archer. The Limbu in Sikkim share their line of descent with that of the Rai and the Sunawar as they all belong to Kiranti group which is also known as the Kirat. The Limbu bear an absolutely uncanny resemblance to the Mongolians due to their broad temple and elongated lower lips. Owing to this distinct quality, they also cherish the designation of being called the Mongolians. They speak Limbu Kura. The Limbu of Sikkim also possess an integral bond with the Lepcha. The Limbu easily enter into matrimonial relations with the Lepcha. As a matter of fact, the Limbu in general are in favor of intercaste marriages. Another tribe that also shares a good bond with the Limbu are the Rai or the Khamba. Majority of the marriages of the Limbu at Sikkim are conducted without asking any kind of permission from the parents of both the bride and the bridegroom. The Limbu across Sikkim are further bifurcated into a pair of sects, namely the Lhasa Gotra, who descended from the domain of Lhasa, and Kashi Gotra, who hailed from Banaras, the religious hub of India. The high priests who perform all their major and minor ceremonies are known as the Pedamba. The bulk of these ceremonies include the various religious rituals and the omens and future prediction. Now let us understand a little bit about the Guru. The members of the Gurung tribe are regarded as the most hard-working and down-to-earth people residing in Sikkim. They invest much of their time in cultivation, tilling the ground, sowing crops and various other miscellaneous tasks that can be linked to agriculture. The Gurung share a common line of descent with that of the robust Mongolians. This is because their facial features and lifestyle are strikingly similar to those of the Mongolians. They speak Gurungkura. 
the Guru practice Hinduism with respect and devotion. They also include the Brahmins in their religious ceremonies. The Gurungs are divided into two groups, namely the Charjat and the Sorajat. As far as marriages are concerned, intergroup weddings are very common. Now, a little bit about the Rai. The Rai are also known as Kamba, bear a peculiar similitude with the Limbu. They are mostly Hindus and are ardent followers of all the various rituals and customs performed by the Hindus in other parts of India. The Rai are also noted for the way they summon the males of their family. The male members of the family also perform all sorts of rituals as they have all the powers that are usually possessed by the high priest. Since superstitions are still embedded deep inside their minds, the Rai across Sikkim make it a point to employ Bijua in order to drive away the evil spirits who, according to them, cause plenty of harm. With regard to marriage customs, the Rai within Sikkim have a lot of similarity with that of the Kirati tribe. The primary means of earning a livelihood among the Rai is farming. They have developed their own special dialect and are gifted with artistic talents. Now, before I end, I would like to conclude with some more interesting facts about Sikkim. Now, we know that Sikkim states border with only one state, and that is West Bengal in South. And Sikkim also shares boundaries with three countries, that are Nepal, Bhutan, and China. It is also one of the states which shares its boundary with the maximum number of countries apart from Arunachal Pradesh. Now, Sikkim is one of the landlocked states in India. By landlocked, what do we mean? By landlocked, we refer to the state which is completely surrounded by land. So, in this way, we can say that Sikkim has its surrounding or is uh, surrounded by land on all its sides. Sikkim also has the smallest state high court in India. Nathula Pass in Sikkim was reopened on the 6th of July 2006 after closing the pass since 1962 Indochina War. The Nathula Pass is also known as a Silk Route. Now for many of you here, Silk Route would create a kind of a buzz as to what is a Silk Route. Now let me give you a brief about the Silk Route. Silk Route, also known as the Silk Route or the Silk Road, is an ancient trade route which linked China with the West that carried goods and ideas between the two great civilizations of Rome and China. Yes, Rome and China were known as the two great civilizations. Now, silk went westward and wools, gold and silver went towards the east. So, China also received Nestorian Christianity and Buddhism from India through the Silk Route. And one should also know that this Silk Route, as we mentioned, is in Sikkim and it has led to a lot of prosperity. Now, Sikkim became India's first fully organic state in 2015. Now, with these interesting facts, let us sum up what we did in today's session. In the session, we discussed briefly about the tribal scenario in Sikkim. Lepcha, Bhutia and Nepali are the major communities that reside in Sikkim. The Lepcha considers themselves to be the original inhabitants while the other two communities migrated to Sikkim at different periods. Today, the Nepali community, which is not strictly tribal, constitute the sizable population of the state. Besides the Lepcha and the Bhutia, there are also some other tribes that are associated with the Nepali community. Each of these tribes has its own distinct culture, customs, habits, language, religion and other features although most of their members speak Nepali which has become the lingua franca of Sikkim. As to their religious affiliation, we notice that many of these tribes followed their own traditional religion in the past but later on embraced either Buddhism or Hinduism and at a later stage many of them became Christians. Other religions are also found in Sikkim. With this, I hope you have understood about the tribals in Sikkim and learned a little bit more about the tribals in Sikkim. Thank you.